Hey friends, it's Laurie. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I'm sharing a new Dollar Tree birdhouse bird feeder DIY along with seven of my other favorite bird bath and bird feeder projects. I really hope you enjoy them, so let's get busy. Getting started, I'm using one of the plastic garden dishes from the Dollar Tree, but you can always use something that you already have on hand. I used my hair dryer and I added some heat to the top and the bottom labels and they came off super quick without any residue. To make the tower in the middle of my bird feeder, I'm actually using 16 of the tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. I'm adding some hot glue into the center of the bowl and then attaching the blocks one next to the other. Now that I'm done, I'm adding some more hot glue and my next layer of blocks. As I'm adding them, I'm making sure to do my best to keep the sides and the top as even as possible. From there, I'm following the exact same instructions, adding my hot glue and my two layers of blocks to make my tower. I'm adding one of the wooden Dollar Tree bird houses on the top of my tower as an accent. I'm using some brown and some blue acrylic paint. I'm painting the roof brown and the body of the birdhouse blue and these two colors will be coordinating with a glass plate that I'll be using as a base. Now I'm definitely not a paint expert, but everything that I've researched on the internet says that acrylic paints are safe to be used around birds, but I would recommend that you check the ingredients before you use them. I'm giving the garden dish a base and I picked up this pretty glass dinner plate at the Dollar Tree. To attach the two pieces together, I'm using some E6000. I simply turned the plastic dish over and added some to the bottom center. When I was done, I then turned it right side up and centered it on the glass plate. And the E6000 will in no way come in contact with the birds. To attach the birdhouse, I placed some hot glue on the bottom and attached it to the tower. What's a birdhouse without some birds? And I found these two at Michael's. They just happened to be blue and green and matched my plate perfectly. Using my hot glue gun, I attached one to the perch and the other on the roof. To make the hanging base for my feeder, I'm using one of the 14 inch wire wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. I'm recycling this white chain. It was originally black and I had found it in the garden department at the Dollar Tree. I want them to be the same color, so I'm giving each a coat with my brown spray paint. I'm attaching them together by clipping one of the chains on the outside support. With that attached, I'm now moving over to two sections and I'm attaching the next chain on the outside support. With those attached, I'm now placing the plate into the center base. My plate is pretty heavy, so I'm not attaching it to the wire base, but if you have a light plate, you can definitely use your E6000 and attach it to the base. To fill my feeder, I'm adding just about four cups of bird seed. To attach the last clip, I counted over two spaces. I once again attached it on the outside support and this way my feeder would hang balanced. With that complete, all that's left to do is hang it outside for the birds. If you're new to my channel and you're enjoying my videos so far, 
please consider clicking on that little red subscribe button below and leaving me a big thumbs up. And if you're one of my returning friends, you know I'm always so happy to see you. Getting started for the base of my bird bath, I'm using one of the 14 inch wire wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. To hang it, I'm using a plant hanger also from the Dollar Tree and it measures 20 inches in length and this includes the hanger and the clips. To surround the bird bath and add my flowers, I'm recycling an old grapevine wreath. It measures 14 inches so it will fit perfectly in the Dollar Tree wreath form. To get it ready, I'm removing all the little buds and the stems and the leaves that were already on it. This next step is completely optional. You can leave the form and the chain black, but I have this really pretty seafoam green spray paint, so I'm going to give both of them a coat. Once both pieces have dried, I'm turning the form over and working on the reverse side. I'm then placing my 14 inch grapevine wreath into the center of the form. Now that I have it in place, I'm using some floral wire to attach both pieces together. On the form, there are six supports. So I'm taking a piece of floral wire and at one of the supports, I'm wrapping it around the form and the wreath and then twisting them both together in the center. After I complete the first one, I'm then working my way around the wreath and at each support, I'm adding a piece of floral wire. Once I'm done, I'm then using my clippers and I'm clipping off the extra wire and just folding the ends over. And once you finish, you'll have your two pieces attached together. For the bath part of my project, I'm using a 10 inch terracotta saucer that I picked up at Walmart. But you can also use a plate from the Dollar Tree. As long as the bath will sit centered and level, you can use pretty much anything that you have on hand. My inspiration flower for this project are these pretty hydrangeas that I found at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint the bottom of my saucer, and this is completely optional, so that it matches the flowers, and I'm using this pretty periwinkle acrylic paint. I'm leaving the top edge of the saucer as is, and I'm just giving everything under it a coat of paint. With it now completely dry, I'm going to give it an extra coat of protection using some of my gloss Mod Podge. I have my saucer turned upside down and I'm just giving it a complete coat. I know the birds are going to be landing on all different areas of the bath, but I wanted to give them a few extra places, so I'm using six wooden ends of my old Dollar Tree foam brushes. Once they've pretty much had it, I just remove the foam end and if you don't have any of these on hand, you can always cut up a dowel or use some of the Dollar Tree skewers. After making sure that acrylic paint was safe for birds, I'm using some of this brown Dollar Tree acrylic paint and I'm giving each of my handles a good coat. Once they're dry, I'm not going to use any protective finish on them, I'm just going to leave them painted. Now that they're all dry, I'm going to give my birds six places to perch by using my glue gun and some E6000. To keep them evenly spaced, I'm once again going to use the form supports and I'm placing on some hot glue to help hold them in place and then I'm using some E6000 to set them up permanently. While I'm attaching the perch, I'm making sure that I leave enough space so that my basin will fit in comfortably. And if you're not sure of the spacing, you can always just leave the basin in as you're adding them. By using each of the supports as my guide, it's giving me even spacing as I work around the form. Adding on these extra places to perch yeah, completely optional, and if you're making this for yourself, you can customize it any way you'd like. 
For the flower accent on my bird bath, I'm using these pretty blue hydrangeas from the Dollar Tree and I'm also using some of their lavender. Getting them ready to attach, I'm removing all the heads from the stems and I'm also removing the leaves from the lavender bunch. Now that I have them all detached from their stems, they're ready to become an accent on my bird bath. I'm once again using my glue gun and I'm placing two bunches of hydrangea, some lavender, and some leaves in each of the six sections on my wreath. I just added some hot glue and then I pushed the stems in between the branches of the grapevine. I'm using hydrangeas for my bird bath because they are truly one of my favorite flowers. I have a bunch of hydrangea bushes around my home. I have the white and the pink and the blue and the purple and I just think they're beautiful. But as I was working on this project, I thought I bet sunflowers would look really pretty too. So I think what I'm going to do is head on over to the Dollar Tree and pick myself up a bunch of sunflowers and follow the exact same instructions and make myself a matching bird feeder that will go perfect right alongside my bird bath. I was thinking I gave the last bird bath I made away as a gift and if you know someone who loves flowers, this would make a perfect gift for them too. I just continued adding my flowers and my leaves until all six sections on the form were complete. Now that I'm done, I just need to add in the water basin and it's super easy, just like earlier. I place it in the center and make sure that it's level. To add the hanger, I'm using the Dollar Tree chain that I had sprayed green. It comes with three clips on the end of the three chains and once again, I'm using the supports on the wreath form as my guide. To make sure that it hangs level, there are six supports. So I'm attaching a clip next to every other support. This way it evenly spaces each of the three chains. So when you hang it, it will be level. Now that I have my hanger in place, all that's left to do is head outside and add in some water. I hung my bird bath on a shepherd's hook and I added a small flat rock into the center. And because small birds can get nervous if the water's too deep, I added just about an inch. I placed my bird bath near my bird feeders and then I just waited for my little feathered friends to show up and get a drink or take a bath. And with that, my hydrangea bird bath is complete. I'm starting my trash to treasure bird feeder using some sticks from Mother Nature. As the base for my project, I'm recycling these three tin cans. I used a can opener to open these three, but there are pull off tops on some of the tin cans. Once you pull off the top, they can leave a really sharp edge. My clippers were handy, so I just used those and I pressed the sharp edge down against the can and so if you do have the pull off tops, those will work fine and this way they won't be sharp on the edges. I'll also be using three large craft sticks and some of the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, but you can use any rope that you have on hand. To block up the front so the seed doesn't fall out, I'm following the rounded shape with my pencil and then I'm cutting it out. 
Once I had it cut out, I checked the fit and then I hot glued it into place. After my first one was complete, I then followed the same instructions for the other two. With all my seed stoppers in place, I'm now taking my sticks, I'm measuring them against the front, and I'm cutting them to size. At the same time, I'm also cutting extras to cover the back of my can. I now have a pile of cut sticks and I'm using my glue gun to glue them across the front of my craft stick. Because the sticks aren't perfect, you're still going to see little hints of the craft stick underneath. So all I'm doing is cutting a few more pieces. I'm layering them on the top so it's no longer visible. When I'm done, I turn the can around and I'm following the exact same instructions, making sure that both ends of the can have the sticks heading in the same direction. This is a rustic project, so you don't have to be super fussy. I'm just continuing to add the sticks until I can no longer see the silver end of the can. With both ends of the can complete, I'm now cutting the sticks to cover the sides. I'm allowing myself a slight overhang on each side of the can and I'm just cutting an assortment of different shapes and sizes of sticks that I picked up in my yard. When I had a handful cut, I used my glue gun and started gluing them around the side of the can. Because the sticks are all different shapes and sizes, it's not exactly perfect, but that's what gives it the rustic vibe. One of the fun things about making this is if you don't want it to be a bird feeder, all you need to do when you finish is attach it to a tree and it turns into a bird house. When I'm done, I can see some areas of silver still peeking through. So all I'm doing is adding on a few extra sticks here and there until I can no longer see any of the silver. When my first can is covered and finished, I then make two more so I have three in total. I'm adding a perch to the bottom of each of my feeders and I'm taking a longer stick I'm kind of measuring it on the bottom and then I'm cutting it to size. When I'm done, I use my hot glue gun. I attach it on the bottom, making sure that it's centered in the middle. When my first one was complete, I then did the same for my other two and I made sure that the perches all were about the same length. Attaching the feeder together, I'm starting with two on the bottom. I'm adding a generous amount of hot glue to one side and doing the same to the other side of the feeder. Then I'm just attaching them both together. I then held them in place for about a minute so the glue could set up. I'm adding my last feeder to the top and I'm making sure that it's centered on the bottom too. Once I have it in place, I'm again adding some hot glue and I'm attaching it to the bottom feeders. If you want to sit your feeder atop something, then you're done. All you need to do is add some seed, but I'm going to hang mine, so I'm going to attach a hanger. I'm using some of the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, but you can use anything you have on hand. I'm placing it under my bird feeder. I'm deciding about how long I want the hanger to be and then I'm tying a tight double knot on the top. When I was done, I cut off the extra rope and I tucked my two side rope tails under and I hot glued them into place. 
When I was done, I then added some additional hot glue to the sides of the rope to hold them into place. Now that my trash to treasure bird feeder is complete, I'm adding on a double end snap to hang it and you can adapt just about anything to hang this feeder. The last thing I need to do is invite the birds to come on over and check out the feeder, so I'm adding in some bird seed. I hung my feeder and I added a few seeds on the top to entice the birds and I'd say within a minute I had my first little guest. Getting started, I picked up a 12 inch wire wreath form at Michael's and I'm going to remove the inner support. I slipped my pliers under the edge of all six metal loops and I pulled them open and this freed up the inner circle. I'm now using my pliers to close and flatten the six loops. When I'm done, I'm then turning the form over and this will become the top of our bird bath. And once again, using my pliers, I'm now grabbing hold of each of the tabs and I'm pulling them down and slightly under. And by doing this, we now have an open area for our water basin. I'm definitely no bird expert, but from what I've read on the internet, it says birds like about one to three inches of water to bathe in. For the bath part of my bird bath, I'm using a clear glass pie plate that I picked up at a thrift store for a dollar. And it sets perfectly inside the form. To decorate the bottom of my pie plate, I'm using a package of blue and clear flat bottom beads that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I washed them all with my Dawn soap to make sure there was no oily residue. I'm using this all-purpose adhesive to attach my beads to the bottom of the plate. I'm not using gloves, so I'm keeping this wooden stick handy in case I need to move anything around. Here comes the fun part, and you can let your creativity kick in. I turned the pie plate over and I'm working on the bottom of the plate and then using my adhesive I'm starting to add the beads and I'm going to make a little flower pattern. This glue works amazing. I'm just adding some to the bottom of the plate and then I'm placing the flat ends of the beads in the glue. I'm using this type of adhesive because it specifically says it glues glass to glass. Now, E6000 says it also does. I wasn't really sure how well that would hold up out in the weather, so I used this instead, but the E6000 might work just as well. If you end up using E6000 to make this project, please be sure to leave me a comment below and let me know how it worked out. I chose blue and clear glass beads for my bird bath, but you can find an assortment of different color beads at the Dollar Tree. As I was gluing them down, I did notice that they aren't uniform in size, and although I wanted to have a perfect pattern on the bottom, that just wasn't going to happen. Once I had the bottom complete, I then placed one row around the side. With my glue completely dry, I then turned over the plate and using a damp cloth, I just removed any of the excess residue. I need a hanger and all I could find at my Dollar Tree was the chain on this hanging basket, so I removed it to use on my bird bath. To match my beads, I'm using some blue spray paint and I'm painting the chain and both sides of my wire base. I let both pieces dry completely and 
Then to attach the three chains, I just clipped one onto every other support. Before I clipped on my last chain, I then placed my decorated plate in the center. Once I had it in place, I then clipped on my last chain. This not only makes an amazing bird bath, but it also doubles as a bird feeder. To finish up, I hung it outside and I added in some water. I'm starting my pine cone wreath bird feeder by using a bunch of pine cones that I picked up around my yard. To dry out the sap, I baked them in a 200 degree oven, single layered for about 30 minutes. The size of your wreath will determine how many pine cones you need to use. For my base, I'm using this 12 inch Dollar Tree willow wreath, but you can use anything that you have on hand. I'm using about a roll and a half of this Dollar Tree green burlap. It's not the color I wanted, but I'll show you what I end up doing to it. I'm also going to be using one of the little wooden crates that I found in the craft department at the Dollar Tree. And to give the wreath a dual purpose as either a bird feeder or a bird bath, I'm using this two pack of small plastic containers from the Dollar Tree. The first thing I'm going to do is add some Mod Podge and help seal up my willow wreath. I'm using an old foam brush to get in between all the nooks and crannies and once the front is done, I then turn it over and I do the back. When I'm done with the wreath, I'm now going to paint the sides and the bottom of my little wooden crate, making sure not to get any of the Mod Podge inside. I'm once again using an assortment of sticks that I picked up in my yard. I'm measuring and cutting them just like I did for my tin can bird feeder. And just like the tin can bird feeder, this is a rustic piece, so not to worry if some of the sticks are a little longer or shorter than the others. When I have enough cut, I'm using my glue gun and I'm attaching them to the side of the crate. As I'm adding the sticks, I can see there are gaps because none of the sticks are straight or perfect. And all I'm going to do when I'm done filling in the side is just kind of go back and layer on more sticks until I no longer can see the crate. When I'm done, I then turn the crate around and do the exact same thing on the other side. With both of my sides complete, it's now time to cut the sticks for the ends and hot glue those into place. And once again, after one side was done, I turned it around and I did the same on the other. Then to finish up the crate, I'm cutting some sticks for the bottom and I'm hot gluing those on as well. Once I had my first layer on, I continued layering them until I could no longer see the crate. Now that it's finished, I'm setting it aside and I'm going to prep the wreath. Now that my wreath has dried, I'm going to wrap it with this green Dollar Tree burlap. I really wanted the natural colored one, but my Dollar Tree didn't have any, so I'm just using the green and adding a little dot of hot glue on the wreath, and then I'm starting to wrap it around. After I wrap it around a few times, I'm then adding a dot of hot glue to help hold it in place. When my first roll was done, I just added some hot glue added the second roll and followed the same instructions. Now that my wreath is completely wrapped and it's this pretty green color that I don't want, I really want the pine cones to blend with it. So I'm using some brown paint and I'm giving the whole thing a coat on both sides. 
I'm attaching the feeder part of the bird feeder and I'm taking two pieces of floral wire and I'm folding them in half. I'm attaching the floral wire by adding some hot glue on the center edge of each side. Once the glue has cooled, I'm placing the wires over the wreath and I'm twisting them into place. When I'm done, I'm just bending over the excess wire. With my pine cones out of the oven and cooled, I'm going to start attaching them to the wreath. Using my glue gun, I'm attaching them to the outside middle of the wreath at an angle and I'm heading counterclockwise. As I'm attaching the pine cones, I have the stick crate kind of like bent and resting on the side of the wreath, but once I move closer to it, I'll be attaching pine cones around it. I'm using some of the same nautical rope that I used in my first project. I'm sliding it around the wreath to make my hanger. I decided how long I wanted to make it, and then I cut off the excess rope and I made a knot. I gave the rope a little hot glue to help hold it in place and then I continued on adding my pine cones. With my outside layer complete, I'm adding a second row of pine cones and all I'm doing is hot gluing them against the wreath. I'm having them lean slightly on the first layer and I'm keeping them at an angle. When I'm gluing the pine cones near the bottom of the crate, I'm just kind of holding it up with my hand, and then with my other hand, I'm adding the hot glue and I'm adding some pine cones underneath it. Now that my second row is complete, I'm starting my third, and I'm starting under the stick crate, and I'm adding another layer of pine cones. And now I'm just continuing on and I'm adding the pine cones to my third and my inside row. This side of my wreath is complete and now I'm going to turn it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm adding my second row of pine cones and some of you may know I basically live in a pine forest and I have thousands and thousands of pine cones all around me. I was inspired during the holidays to make this pretty pine cone wreath and I'll actually link that below in case you'd like to check it out. And so when I was looking for a trash to treasure project and I have these millions of pine cones everywhere, I thought, hey, why not make a wreath that's a bird feeder? So that's kind of how I was inspired to make this. And now I'm finishing up by adding on my third row. If you'd like to make this a small bird bath instead of a bird feeder, drill three or four holes through the bottom of the crate before adding the sticks. And then just treat the inside wood with a non-toxic wood sealer. Then add a plastic basin to hold the water. My wreath bird feeder is finally complete. This part is completely optional, but I found these two little blue containers at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to add them onto the bottom of my crate. I'm placing my seed in them, but they would also work great if you wanted to use them as the bird bath. I added in some bird seed and with that, my rustic wreath bird feeder is complete. <laughs> I'm starting this bird feeder with a broken teacup and saucer. These are vintage and they were my grandmother's. I found them broken in a box and I honestly couldn't bear to part with them so I thought a great way to use them was to make them into a bird feeder. I'm first going to reattach the handle using some E6000. Now that it's attached, I'm going to place it aside and let it set up overnight. Now on the edge of the saucer, there is a chip and I'm going to cover it up so that no birds get injured. I'm using a wooden craft stick along with the wooden handle from an old foam paintbrush. I'm giving each of them a coat with my brown acrylic paint. 
when they're dry and so that both pieces are even. I'm cutting about an inch off the end of the craft stick. Once again, using some E6000 to cover the chip on the saucer, I added some to the bottom. I then covered it with the craft stick. I let it set up for a few minutes, then added some E6000 to the wooden handle and attached that over the craft stick. Now that I'm done, I'm going to let it set up until it's completely dry or just about 48 hours. I'm going to be attaching the two together, but before I do, I'm using a piece of sandpaper and I'm trying to remove some of the shiny finish on the side of the teacup and the saucer. Now that I'm done, I'm adding a generous amount of E6000 on the side of the cup and on the saucer and I'm making sure the cup is centered in front of the perch. To hold everything steady and in place, I added on a piece of painter's tape. After it had set up for 24 hours, I then removed the tape. For the hanger, I'm using a piece of vintage lace, but you can use jute or rope or ribbon or anything that you have on hand. I slid the lace through the handle and then secured the two ends together by making a tight knot. I trimmed the end of the lace, making sure to leave a long enough end and then I hot glued some greenery to the hanger. When I was done, I added in some bird seed and I hung it out for the birds. And I have to say, every time I see it, it's a nice memory because I think of my grandmother. I'm making some bird seed hearts and a wreath and these projects are best to be made in a cooler climate. Getting started, I'm adding some dry fruit to my hanging hearts and I'm using two boxes of raisins and about a half a bag of these organic dried cranberries. I opened the two boxes of raisins onto my cutting board. Using my knife, I then cut them into smaller pieces and I think you can probably leave them original size, but I just wanted to make them a little smaller so they were easier for the birds to eat. When I was done, I added about a half a bag of the dried cranberries and then I chopped those up as well. When I was done, I mixed them both up and now I'm going to make the gelatin that will hold the dried fruit and the seeds together. I'm using the Knox gelatin and there's four packages inside. I'm only going to be using two. Along with the gelatin, I'm also using some whole wheat flour and some corn syrup and I picked all these ingredients up at Target. I have three quarters of a cup of hot water and I'm adding in both packages of the gelatin. Then I'm just whisking it all together until it's completely dissolved. With that done, I'm now mixing in three tablespoons of corn syrup and I'm going to mix that together as well. When I'm done, I'm then adding in three fourths of a cup of the wheat flour. I'm now adding that to my mixture and I'm combining them all together. I picked my bird seed up at my local Walmart and I'm going to be slowly blending in four cups. The mixture gets a little thick, so I just kept adding in my seed and I used a little muscle to mix it all together. Once all the seed was blended, I then incorporated my chopped raisins and dried cranberries. I'm making my bird seed mixture into Valentine hearts and I'm using two heart cookie cutters and two plastic heart bowls that I have, but you can always use anything that you have on hand. You're going to have to make a hole in your heart so you can add your hanger and I just went outside and cut four sticks at about four inches in length. I placed a piece of waxed paper over my cookie sheet and then using some vegetable spray, I sprayed the inside of my bowls and my cookie cutters. 
So now that they all have a coat of vegetable spray, I'm taking my birdseed mixture and I'm filling my two heart bowls and my cookie cutters. Once my seed mixture was pressed into place, I then took one of the sticks that I cut, I decided how I wanted my heart to hang, and then I pressed the stick into the seed, making sure that it hit the bottom of my container and the cookie cutters. As I was adding the seed, I didn't measure out any exact amounts. I just kind of eyeballed the size of my containers and the amount of the bird seed mixture. Now that I'm done, I'm placing my cookie sheet in the refrigerator and I'm going to let it set up overnight. Now it's the next day and my hearts have completely set up and I'm placing mine on this cookie rack, but you can place yours on anything you'd like. The vegetable spray did its job and they're slipping right out of the molds. And then I'm just removing the sticks. Now that all four of my hearts are free from their molds and they have a hole in them, I'm going to be giving each one a ribbon hanger. I'm using some Valentine's Day ribbon from the Dollar Tree along with some that I had in my stash. I slipped four different ribbons through each of the hearts. I cut them all at different lengths and then I just tied them off with a knot. I wouldn't suggest using any cord or jute as a hanger because it can act like a saw and in the wind it can cut right through the hole in your heart. After I had added all the hangers, we had the worst weather blow through here. It was snow showers and rainy. It was just miserable. so. I did take the hearts and I left them out in my garage for about four days. And by doing that, they actually were a bit drier and seemed more firm than when I first removed them from the fridge. I hung my four hearts outside and in about 10 minutes, I had a hungry little bird land and start pecking away at the feeder. To start my birdseed wreath, I'm first going to be adding in some unsalted peanuts and I just picked these up at my local grocery store. I removed them from their shells and I'm going to be adding in a cup, but this step is completely optional. You can always just add in an extra cup of birdseed. So now that I'm done, I have just about a cup of peanuts and I'm placing them into my measuring cup. And then I'm going to break them up into smaller pieces just by crushing them with my ice cream scoop. Instead of using the traditional lard that a lot of people use to make their birdseed wreath, I'm going to make mine with coconut oil and I picked mine up at Target. I'm using three and a half cups of the melted oil, so I picked up two jars. I placed them both in my microwave to melt and then I measured out three and a half cups. This wreath is so easy to make. I then just poured my measured coconut oil into a larger bowl. I then added in seven cups of bird seed, my cup of crushed peanuts, and I actually had a half a bag left of the dried cranberries. So I just chopped those up and added those in as well. And then I just gave it a good mixing. To make my wreath look pretty, I'm using my bunt pan, and if you don't have one of these, you can always find them at thrift stores. They're usually pretty cheap. I slowly poured my seed mixture into the pan. I leveled it off, and then I placed it in my refrigerator, and I let it set up overnight. To remove the wreath, I placed the bottom part of the pan in some warm water, and I let it set there for about 20 seconds. I then placed a sheet of waxed paper over the top and my bird seed wreath slipped right out. I wish you were here because this smells so good. For my hanger, I'm adding a thicker Valentine's Day ribbon to my wreath and if you've watched any of my past videos, you know this is pretty much all I've been able to score at my Dollar Tree this year. I cut about a 36 inch length of ribbon 
I then wrapped it around the center of my wreath, tied it into a strong knot, clipped off the excess end, and then it was ready to hang. And one quick tip is that coconut oil melts at 76 degrees, so this is definitely a wreath to make for cooler climates. If you've made it to the end of my video, I hope you enjoyed making these bird feeders and bird baths with me. I always love to watch the birds. I just think it's so relaxing. And if you're new to my channel and you're thinking, hey, I'd like to come back and hang out with her again, don't forget to click that little red subscribe button below. I will see you all very soon. Bye, everybody.